Hello and welcome back. In the last video I showed you how to use animator parameters to change the state of an animation and then we tweaked the animation transitions to make it look a little bit better. So just a quick recap, I created this attacking bool. Um, we start in the spawn phase, go into running, and then once we're close enough to a player we trigger the attack boolean. That transitions to the attack animation and then as soon as that boolean is set to false we tr transition back to running. Um, so that's that's about as far as we've come. Uh, right before this video, I went ahead and deleted the gun that I had made. Um, the gun that I showed you how to model was pretty crappy. Uh, I could have done a lot better with time, but I, I just wasn't feeling it. So let's go ahead and go to the Unity Asset Store. And we're going to find a much better looking weapon. Usually to find something, I decide what category I want. So right now we're looking for a 3D model. And we can narrow that down. Props, weapons, and then I don't like paying for things. So I'm going to sort by free. But right off the bat, this one looks kind of interesting. So I'm going to open that with middle mouse click and then sort by price. So now everything on like the first 10 pages is free. Don't quote me on that, but... Oh, the, yeah, there's almost 10 pages worth of stuff that's free. So, once again, sort by price in weapons. There's lots of stuff we can use. This one looks cool. And I, I'm, I'm just going to middle mouse click on a bunch of them and see which ones I like. I like that one. And this is part of the process of game development. Uh, if you're working on your own, it's it's not really feasible to build everything from scratch. Uh, I recommend at least downloading this stuff now and working with it. And then for the hardcore users out there, um, if you want to try to rebuild everything from scratch, do that. But at least get some sort of prototype in place using other people's assets. Oh, and, and so now, now we're into the paid assets. This one costs a dollar. So the first five pages were free. And I, I'm just going to search through these. Um, I, I'm looking for more of a sci-fi feel. Like, if we want it to be like a laser gun or like a gravity gun or something, obviously we can't use an M16. Uh, but but some of the sci-fi assets, like this one, I, I feel like we could pretty much use this for any any type of weapon. Um, this this is fairly limited, and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't fit with the feel of our game. I like this one a lot. It, it would be pretty satisfying to like crash this down on the head of the monster, but um, I'm not going to do that in this video. This one's good. I feel like we could get like a lot of different uses out of this one. Ooh, I like that too. <laughs> That's actually kind of awesome. And this is just part of the process. Uh, I'm going to pause this video here for a second. Hello and welcome back. Um, I just got a phone call so I had to stop the video. Um, I w when I left off, I think I was looking through these assets. Oh yeah, so I, I really like the look of this one. Uh, but it seems like it, would, it wouldn't, quite, wouldn't quite fit with what we're doing. And also, it, it's kind of hard to create lasers. So I'm going to rule that one out. Um, I like this one, but it seems a little bit small. Um, I really like this one, and I, I want to use it later, but right now I'm focused on creating a gun. And I really like this one, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and download that. Download. Now, while that's downloading, um, I'm going to go into my Assets folder within the Project View. Create, and we'll, we'll just create a folder called Imported. Um, and then I'm going to drag the monster into that folder. And so for, for any big assets that we download, we don't want to clutter up our project view too much. That's weird. I don't even know where this folder came from. <laughs> anyway, uh, we don't want this to get too cluttered. So 
wh whatever we download, we're going to drag into this imported folder. And then later on, for the hardcore users, it, if you want to completely create the project on your own, you can um, go through these one by one and recreate the assets. So you could create your own monster, your own tree textures, your own first person weapon. And I'll, I'll just pause the video while, while I wait for this. Alright, so it finished downloading and now we're ready to import it. Um, seems like there's kind of a lot of stuff here. I might not need all of this. Sci-fi, prefabs. I suspect that there's duplicates because it says mobile and then models. Maybe not. Prefabs. Yeah, so we have two copies of the rocket launcher. One for desktop and one for mobile. So we don't need the mobile version. And let's just import that. You can middle click on the asset store to get rid of that window. Oh yeah, and, and this is also going to take a little bit to import. So I'm going to pause the video again. Alright, so I had finally finished importing everything, so we're going to take that free guns pack and drop it into imported. Um, it came with a demo scene, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and save the scene we have now, and then jump into that gun assets demo scene. Yeah, those look pretty freaking awesome. Uh, I'm definitely going to use this white assault rifle. Um, I'm considering also trying to use the, the rocket launcher. Oh man, I like these a lot. All like all four of these weapons look really fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so going back to our scene. Mine is in scenes B. And uh, we can't see the player, so I'm just going to add a mesh filter with a capsule mesh and a mesh renderer. Whoops. Mesh render. So that this this is where our person would be. Um, I th I think they're like two units tall. Um, so you can picture the top of their head would be here. Their shoulder would be about here. So we want the gun to be like here. Go ahead and open up the guns prefabs. And I think I want a sci-fi rifle. So I'm just gonna drag that directly onto the player. Put it on their camera and then start to move it around. It looks like it's it's already at a pretty nice scale, which is really convenient for us. It's kind of a huge pain in the ass when uh, when things have a weird scale. Oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> I hope you're as excited about this weapon as I am. I think it looks really fantastic. Alright, so that, that's in a good position. So go ahead and play that and make sure that it moves you onto the camera. Looks good. Uh, later we can make it kind of wobble around. Um, I'm not going to do that yet. Yeah, that looks good. I'd kind of like it to be a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to go in and... Um, take the rifle material and I'm just going to give it an emission of like 0.1 ugh, that looks bad Point zero six versus zero. Yeah, I mean, maybe I should, maybe I should just leave it the way it is. It, it does look pretty awesome. And I think I'm also going to scale it a little bit this direction just to make it look a little bit beefier. Shake this out again.
Yeah. I like that. Okay. Okay. So I, I know it's probably not that entertaining to watch me tweak these values, but um, you'll, you'll appreciate the, the results when we get to the final project. The final product. Blech. I can't talk today. All right. So I ended up with the gun at position 0 0.5, minus 0 0.3, and 0 0.8 with a X scale of 1.6. Now, we want to shoot a bullet from this point, and a as the character sort of swings the gun around, that point is going to move. So the easiest way to get a reference to that point is to create an empty game object, and we're going to call this Muzzle. And we're going to put it right at the tip of the gun, like there. And now you can see, um, if we sort of point up into the air, the muzzle is still correctly at the end of the weapon. Um, and then go ahead and go into the scripts folder. We're going to create a character folder. Go into that and then create a new c -sharp script and we're going to call that basic gun. drag this onto the gun, open that up, and all I'm going to do right now is create a reference to the muzzle. So we're going to have a game object, public game object, muzzle. And now we could do the same thing before, where we do muzzle equals game object dot find, and then I could put in the word muzzle and that, that would work, that, that would find the game object and store it into this position, or I mean into this variable. Um, but there's also a, like another way um, that you should be aware of. So you can see I created this muzzle variable and it created this field in the inspector. And we can actually just go over to the hierarchy, grab the muzzle, and drag it onto that field. Um, it's a little bit more processor friendly, so that way when the scene starts up, Unity doesn't have to search through all these game objects and find the muzzle. Um, we already found the muzzle for it, and we, we saved it, so it doesn't have to do that extra processing when the game starts. Um, so now you can see muzzle is saved. Uh, it's, it's always going to be right at the end of our weapon, wherever that may be muzzle here. We have a reference to it and then in the next video we're going to create bullets at that point and shoot them straight forward from the from the gun.